Google just announced Gemini 3.0, and I believe this is like the most anticipated, the most hyped AI model of the year. And today I'm going to be testing it out for coding specifically, because that's what we do in this channel. Alongside the Gemini 3.0 release, Google also announced their newest AI IDE competing with Cursor and Windsor, which is called Google Anti-Gravity. I've had a play around with it for this past few hours. So in addition to trying out Gemini 3.0, I will also be using this IDE and I will be comparing it actually to Droid CLI, which is from Factory AI. And if you didn't know, this is like a CLI that is not really from any like major provider like uh, Cloud Code or Codex. This is a uh, CLI from Factory AI which supports multiple models, uh, which is similar to Cursor, but this is focused on the CLI and they also have like a web version. So I'll be testing it out because they also announced Gemini 3.0 on their platform. So these are the benchmarks that was released by Google in the official article of the announcement. The benchmarks looked really good compared to other models. Uh, but of course, uh, I would say I don't really trust the benchmarks, but in this video, I will just be actually building out a full stack app in a real world scenario. Just see how it looks uh, UI wise and like the how the developer experience will be. And do I and will it actually perform better uh, or worse based on my experience with other models? And now back to the IDE from Google that they announced, which is called um, an anti gravity it has there's a bit of controversy behind the ide that google made which is anti-gravity which is that it is actually just a blatant copy of windsurf and there are several um actual like evidences behind it like for example there are you can find yourself on like x there are several evidences like i've also encountered it where on some parts it will actually um refer to cascade and if you didn't know cascade is like the agent for windsurf and there's a lot of many different instances where you can see uh, like the name uh, Cascade uh, being thrown around. As for the pricing of anti-gravity, it comes with only one pricing at the moment, which is just free. And it is it does have a generous rate limit you can try out. So there is also like access to free models, which is Gemini 3.0 Pro. And that is divided into two, which is the low version and the high version. And Claude's 4.5. And last but not least, the GPT OSS. As for Droid, there are several plans, but there is a free plan you can try out. And if you check the link in the description, I have a link to a Twitter post, which is from one of the devs or like one of the employees from Factory AI who actually released or like, like just shared their referral, which actually grants you 40 million tokens. So you can check that out. And I'm, I've been using this for like the past like month or so. And it is actually like I, I thought it would uh, like last only a couple of weeks, but it's been more than a month and you can actually still access this referral link and you still get 40 million tokens as long as you're, you signed up on a brand new account. When you purchase a plan, you get a monthly limit of 20 million tokens. That's at least for the pro plan. And then if you are on the max plan, um, you get more tokens. And also they just released the ultra plan, which is 2000 bucks and you get like a billion, like 2 billion tokens you can use on that month. Now for the full stack app that I'm going to be building for the real world test, it is going to be an AI accountant dashboard app, which is the app that I usually build on my other comparisons on this channel. It is just like a normal dashboard sort of app where you have an AI assistant that you can just chat with and then the assistant itself will do operations to help you track your finances. So uh, I'm using Codespace to do the planning and I have generated the text back here and also all the tasks has been created and also it has been done. And I am using the starter kit from code guide also, which is the code guide full stack starter kit. You can find it on GitHub just by clicking on this or going to this repo and or you can just search it on Google. It is pretty much built on top of Next.js 15 uh, with Tailwind CSS and Chat CN and the backend is using, uh, sorry, the database is using Postgres with Drizzle ORM and also better auth. This is the setup that I have on my local machine. I already have the started kit cloned onto my machine. And as you can see, this is on anti-gravity. It is already opened up to the workspace on that started kit. And it, it, it already has the docs for um, the project itself that I downloaded from Codespace and also the text pack that I showed you, which is the one, yes, yeah, this one for that AI accountant dashboard. And I just pretty much copied and pasted it into a separate folder, which is, um, yeah, it has this exact same name, but I opened it up on VS Code. So this is the one we're gonna work with on a Droid CLI. So this is just on yeah on VS Code and there's nothing open yet, but I'm gonna be opening Droid CLI and yeah we'll be comparing side by side with the same model Gemini 3.0 and I'm gonna start by writing a simple prompt referring to the text pack. So I have the Droid CLI running on VS Code and when I open Anti Gravity, I have already written the prompt also for the Gemini 3 Pro on high model and I have enabled planning on both. So on Anti Gravity, they have a planning mode 
which I've enabled. And on VS Code or on Droid CLI, I am going to enable the spec uh, mode, which allows me to do a little bit of planning. And basically what it does is it will generate like some, some sort of like spec so that it knows, like it tells us what it's going to execute and what it's going to do overall. And then we can just accept and it'll continue on with the work. So let me just accept or like enter the prompt here on Droid and I'm going to be doing the same on anti-gravity and it should generate us a, some sort of like plan or like spec so that we can review and accept before starting all the tasks. Right, so as you can see um, on anti-gravity, Gemini 3 Pro, like the agent itself already created a plan and an imp implementation plan, also the tasks, and it just executed the tasks straight away. So I didn't really have control over it, um, I guess. <laughs> uh, unlike on Droid CLI, it does come with the plan, like you can actually like, edit and stuff and you can just propose um, iterations and so on, but I'm not gonna do that and I'm just gonna accept it uh, because yeah, I'm not, that did happen on um, Gemini, like on anti-gravity. So to make it fair, I'm just going to go straight to uh, executing the task. So let's just go on the fourth option here, which is approve with high autonomy, which is pretty much YOLO mode. And it's going to start working on everything. And as you can see, yeah, I am on the Gemini 3.0 Pro um, model here. Okay, guys. So the first iteration of the apps from anti-gravity and also Droid with both of them running Gemini 3.0 is finished and you can see that this is the one made from anti-gravity. Uh, it is running on port 3005 and it is not looking that good UI wise for this chat page. But um, yeah, when I tried out the functions or like, uh, like all the functionality of the chat and the dashboard, there were some errors uh, with anti-gravity, the result from anti-gravity. And I tried to resolve them, but there was just so many like um, mishaps and issues. Like for example, I'll just show you guys. So one of the main issue uh, I came across was when I'm using anti-gravity, like I kept on, I just not sure like what I should do. Uh, Cause every time I switch, I switched accounts, I switched models and every like five minutes, I kept on getting these errors. And I'm even on the low uh, version of the Gemini 3.0 uh, Pro, uh, which is really annoying. Like I couldn't get uh, like simple bug fixes to be fixed. And on Droid, it was a lot more smooth, like uh, everything finished uh, pretty quickly. It was like 15 minutes or so. And I'll show you guys the results. So this is just a chat page and the UI itself looks quite good. And um, the dashboard also, I'll actually just start comparing it. So yeah, this is the dashboard. Uh, this is from Droid and the dashboard looks pretty nice. And the thing I noticed with Gemini 3 uh, Pro is that it is very consistent and like very neat in creating these UIs. Like for example, like if I were to use like Composer or SWE or any other model, there's usually like a little bit of a mistake here and there in terms of like the layout. Uh, that could be just a simple padding issue that they just left out. Like if you see my other videos, some of the models usually just uh, miss the padding between the sidebar and the components inside the dashboard, which is like, yeah, it doesn't look good. Yeah, I'll show you guys the one anti-gravity made. So this is, the, I'll just go to the dashboard. This is from anti-gravity. And it is um, looking quite different because uh, I do think that it just took uh, the UI, the existing UI from starter kit that I was using and just put their own version on top of it, which is fine. Uh, and it does look uh, quite better on, on some parts. For example, like these gradients on the background of these uh, cards, that looks better. And also again, the layout and everything is nice. Is the main difference is that there's no home button. And yeah, like if you see the results people get on Gemini 3 Pro on like Twitter uh, and they, people like are sharing like one shots and everything. And it does look pretty well. Like the UI aspect, like for landing pages, it is really good. Like I haven't seen, I guess like what comes close to is like GPT-5 and GPT-5.1. But again, like Gemini 3, I, I do think that they heavily um, invested at least in the training for like UI or front end in general. Like you can see this, like, the designs, I think it doesn't even look AI generated, which is really good. That's why Replit, I guess, implemented it for their new uh, design mode uh, on Replit, Replit Agent. Yeah, because all these different landing pages that people were posting, they look really good. So I just used Gemini 3 Pro on both um, Droid, CLI, and Anti-Gravity to make a landing page for this app. And I must say, like, it looks really good uh, in compared to like other models. Uh, as you can see here, this is the one made by Droid CLI with Gemini 3 Pro. If I go in light mode, yeah, there's a light mode switch here, which is from the starter kit. And also since I'm logged in, it is showing the user a drop down. And yeah, there is, this is a bit misaligned, but that's fine. But let's see it on dark mode because I do think it looks better. So this should be like a preview for the, for the chart, like the dashboard, but it's not showing. That's fine though. And yeah, I use the same prompt for Droid and also anti-gravity. So yeah, let's just review this first from Droid. It looks really nice. Like the gradients don't look very AI uh, generated. I mean, 
AI mostly generates these kind of um, um, gradients, but that's fine. And yeah, I do really like it. Uh, and if I show you guys, so this is the one made by Anti-Gravity. Uh, it does have a little bit of a difference on the top bar here because um, yeah, they thought of a different name, I guess. So it has the same static components, which is the theme dropdown and also the user dropdown. And everything else, uh, I guess the main difference here is the the gradients they use. It is not just blue, but <laughs> of course it needs to add a little bit of purple. It's just typical AI slop. <laughs> but you can switch to light mode. Yeah, it looks okay. But yeah, the colors are not like using the primary colors. That's fine though. Uh, they, I think they tried to make some sort of uh, layout for the dashboard itself, but kind of failed. And instead they just made this animation. <laughs> but yeah, look, if you see the feature, it looks very similar. Uh, this because this is the same problem and I didn't provide any context. I just told it to analyze the app pretty much. Okay. So I want to show you guys the prompt I used to create this landing page. This was on Droid CLI. Uh, whoops, let me just come back there. Okay, so this is the one from Droid CLI. You can see her. I just told it to make a landing page and made it, make it like have a modern style and it's some finance start, startup looking, you know, um, just very generic prompt. And also on anti-gravity, it is also the same. So if I go back here, uh, on this landing page one, and it is just the same. And yeah, it produced pretty much the, a very similar result. And for landing page, it was pretty quick on both. Like Droid CLI managed to do it. I wouldn't. I would say it was like less than five minutes. While Anti Gravity also did about the same. But yeah, um, so that's I just said pretty much for, for the video. Like I was planning to actually fix everything to show you guys that it is fully working, like a dashboard and everything. But it is just not letting me. Like it, it keeps throwing an error. Uh, here and there and it's just taking me so much time especially on anti-gravity like i don't think that it is stable yet like i i highly don't like i'm not recommending anyone to use anti-gravity yet until they release like another version at least or at least it until the traffic like dies down so that you can actually you know use it for free or maybe when there is also like an additional plan that you can purchase that might help things because that probably will provide a better like I would say like provider uh, for the Gemini 3 Pro model for those users. So yeah, um, other than that, let's just move on to my final verdict and my review. Okay, so what I think on the anti-gravity IDE, the Droid CLI, and also Gemini, Gemini 3 Pro in general, I think that Gemini 3 is really good at UI. Like it is, I would say better than GPT-5 in some cases, and even GPT-5.1. But I will be also doing another comparison later on uh, in this channel for that specific use case, which is creating landing pages and creating designs. Like the stuff people have made on X, especially, it was pretty bizarre. Like I would never have guessed it was made from AI, which is something new. Like I wouldn't think that day would come, but it, it is, we're living in it now. So yeah, like overall for UI, Gemini, Gemini 3 Pro, I would definitely be using, but in terms of the tool, uh, anti-gravity, please don't use it yet. It is not ready. It is pretty bad. Like I couldn't get past like one from without any errors, uh, except for the landing page one. That was like really quick and it was fine. But like more complex tasks, like creating a whole dashboard and connecting the database, creating API endpoints, that was just such a bad experience. Like it kept on stopping like every five minutes or so. Uh, so I had to just write continue, continue every time. So every time I was going to the landing page or at least like the agent was trying to access the landing page from the browser that they have or, or integrated into the IDE, it just kept erroring out like it does not yeah it just kept on showing about blank and when i went there like manually it also was doing the same thing like, so it wasn't able to capture anything in my opinion it was a big bummer because that feature was like what made me intrigued into trying out this ide um and yeah that, that wasn't working well uh so yeah that was pretty bad and yeah i just tried to make it work but it wasn't letting me like it just stopped working like it, the browser was just blank for some reason. So yeah, that was like a big bug. Like, <laughs> I'm not sure how to fix it, but maybe it's, I don't know if I misconfigured it or, or something, but I did install extension and also went through the onboarding process for the browser of um, this specific IDE. But yeah, it wasn't working. So yep, I don't rec recommend using this. So if you want to use Gemini 3, I do highly recommend just using uh, Droid CLI. Like Droid CLI, it's really good. Uh, you have more options. So if I go here, like you have with the anti-gravity IDE, there's only like two options for Gemini 3 Pro, which is just the low and the high version. But with this, you do get a medium version and a dynamic uh, option, which allows it to basically probably just like, you know, like trying to route uh, whatever your prompt is and try to make it 
um, like think of it themselves, like which model is better to use. So maybe if it's like a complex task, they probably use the high model. And if it is just a very fast, simple task, then they will just use the low model, right? Or the low version. That's that's what I think. And yeah, it was working really well. Like it was fast overall, but it was at the end, like it was just um, at the very end when I was trying to fix those bugs with the chat, it was, it just kept stopping. Um, like it would, it would just be stuck there. So I just had to stop it. And yeah, it, I had to like manually continue it. And it just kept doing that. So it was not a good experience also. So they definitely need to fix that. And also since Droid CLI does uh, come with a credit based system or like a token based system for the usage, I will show you guys how much it costed me for this app, uh, like for creating the landing page and also the dashboard with the chat feature. Also, although it is not fully working, but I'll just show you guys. So it did take about 1.1 million tokens, which is, I would say quite a lot, uh, but yeah, I guess there was just a lot of, uh, you know, things that I wrote uh, or like I did that made it very inefficient. For example, like it was stuck a few times, so I had to stop it and manually like write the prompt again, which is of course going to add more attention to the context size and probably increase the tokens usage. But yeah, overall, uh, it is better than other models in my opinion, especially since Gemini 3 Pro on, uh, if you see on the models here on uh, Droid, it is right now, like the multiplier is the same as GPT-5, which is really nice. It's only on 0 0.5. And compared to like Sonar 4.5, that is going to be like a lot more expensive. But for UI, UI use cases, I would say, yeah, Gemini 3 Pro is really good for that. So you can definitely use that instead of like the higher uh, spec or like the higher tier models. Okay, so that's it for this video. And I highly recommend you guys try out Gemini 3 Pro. You can try it out on AI Studio or Droid CLI or Cursor or Windsurf. I think it's out on Windsurf, I'm not sure. But yeah, like if you do like making landing pages or if you're uh, just like creating UIs in general, like you're a front-end dev, highly recommend it. It's really good. But as of now, if you do want to do more complex tasks, I don't recommend it. Like I'm, I'm pretty sure it is something to do with the provider, which is Google themselves, like just them handling the infrastructure or the API itself. That isn't like, you know, up to standard, I would say for AI coding, uh, at least compared to other models right now. So yeah, uh, and of course the ID itself, the anti-gravity ID, don't use it yet. It's not worth it. Uh, I guess if you are just using it for the front end, sure. But if you're using it like for your daily task, I don't recommend it. <laughs> just wait, maybe like a week or two, they probably will fix everything. And also Gemini CLI, they probably will release that, the Gemini 3 uh, Pro on uh, Gemini CLI. So uh, we'll keep that uh, in mind and we'll probably try it out. So yeah, that's it. And if you guys have any feedback or have any questions, just leave them in the comments below. If you want to discuss with us, just join the Discord. It's in the description. And also, if you want to do planning and try out the... Uh, creating text pack and everything and generate tasks. You can use code space. There's a link in the description. We have a free trial. Thank you.